On the day Russian soldiers poured across the border into Ukraine, Supreme Court Judge Ivan Mashenko was at work in his office in Kyiv. He rushed home to his apartment where his wife and two small children were watching the news. They packed their bags, got into his car, and drove to the border. Then, like thousands of others, he kissed them goodbye and came straight back. In the coming weeks and months, as Russian troops and armor backed by airplanes and missiles poured into Ukraine, Ivan and millions of everyday citizens across the country faced down their aggressors. In any war, it is the civilians who suffer the most. Many would die in mass graves. Others were tortured, separated from their families. Thousands were forced to flee on foot, clamoring over broken bridges through freezing cold rivers and down streets still shelled by an advancing Russian army. The elderly, many unable to flee, shivered in basements as their apartment buildings were attacked by airstrikes and missiles. In the town of Bucha, Russian soldiers went door to door for the men, tying their hands and executing them in the street. Mariupol city was reduced to rubble. Those who survived the onslaught forcibly moved to Russian territory. Rape has been used as a weapon in this war by Russian soldiers against an untold number of Ukrainian women. The crimes committed by Vladimir Putin's marauding army are vast and cruel. But the people of Ukraine would not bend. Young men who just days before had been baristas, college students, lawyers, were now headed to the front line in fatigues facing the might of the Russian army and knowing they were massively outgunned. Young women signed up in record numbers, driving ambulances while coming under fire and working as frontline medics. Old ladies picked whatever they could from their houses and storehouses, jarred and canned fruits and vegetables and sent them to those living near the front. As the capital Kyiv prepared to defend itself, locals set up checkpoints, sniper positions, using even manhole covers as protection. Restaurants kept their kitchens open day and night, making food in bulk and sending it to the volunteers and soldiers. When Ivan Mashenko, the Supreme Court judge, arrived back in Kyiv, he looked up a young activist he had come to know when he was in court for leading protests to protect the city's parks from developers. 24-year-old Roman Ratushny agreed to let Ivan join his small band of volunteers who were driving to the front north of Kyiv almost daily, then slipping into the woods on foot and flying small handheld drones over Russian positions to monitor their movements. Ivan and Roman were an unlikely pair in life before the war, but formed a profound brotherhood during it. After the Russians retreated from Kyiv's outskirts, Roman volunteered to head to the front in Donbass and was killed there in June. Ivan survived their missions and continues to fight at the front. From the very start of the invasion, the civilians of Ukraine mobilized from the ground up. Their leadership, meanwhile, also rose to the moment. Each day, from his sandbagged office in Kyiv to roving secure locations when movement was essential for survival, President Volodymyr Zelensky spoke to his people and the world. He galvanized his weary citizens while rallying the international community to help in this struggle. When offered an escape from the country, he called not for a ride out, but for weapons. He and his cabinet stayed, broadcasting together from the streets of a European capital under siege, refusing to leave his post as president when all hope seemed lost. This leader and the citizens of Ukraine knew something that the rest of the world did not, that the Russians could be beaten. Not with overwhelming firepower or waves of troops, but with character, heart, and faith. They took what the world gave them, rummaged through what they already had, and pushed back the remnants of a once powerful army, showing the world that no empire can defeat millions of individual acts of people going about their daily lives and refusing to surrender. <laughs>